All right, next up, I've been talking to you about the Victorian bill, which is banning so-called conversion therapy. And just to see why that is such a tremendous problem, go back and watch section one of this episode on the bill uh, and find out for yourself what the bill says. I just walked it through. It's hair raising. It would indeed make the Soviets blush. But I'm not done with the subject. I want to make another segment here. And I want to give you two real life examples, two real life examples of people who stand to lose more than words can can say if this bill passes. And you're gonna see what I mean. The first one actually came from a friend of mine who is a former transgender person. He helps others who, like him, undergo an irreversible transition process only to realize that they have made a terrible mistake. And he helps people who are at their very lowest and that they're very loneliest. He's a tremendous man and he's got amazing friends because of the work that he has done. And he forwarded to me just the other day, one of the hundreds and hundreds of emails that he receives continually from people who are in this awful situation. And I wanna say this, brace yourselves. This is not easy reading. Um, I can't read it all because it is simply too graphic at times. But I am going to give it a crack to read as much as I can because I want you to see what is in fact the greatest, one of the greatest humanitarian crises in this country right now. There is a tsunami of people like this and they are silenced, they are erased, they are not talked about and laws are about to be passed which make helping them and their seeking of that help criminal offences punishable by jail terms as I just described in the last segment in great clarity. Let me read you this awful story. He says this, he says, hello, I watched your video on YouTube. I too have regret medically transitioning and it seems to be a very censored and somewhat controversial topic and opinion, which is wrong. I haven't had SRS, which is sex reassignment surgery, only HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. But that's enough to make me wish I was dead. I'm poor and on a pension for disability and wish nothing more than to have a flat chest again and my penis working again. My sex drive is gone and so is my confidence. I mentioned I'm on a pension because I desperately want breast removal surgery so bad it's not funny but can't afford it. I'm trying to find a way to get funding for it here in Australia to prevent me doing it myself. Now I don't know if I mentioned this as a young man who has gone on the hormone therapy to transition to become a woman. Uh, but I can't afford it. I'm trying to find a way to get funding here in Australia to prevent me from doing it myself. I'm seriously gonna cut my rib sides with a scalpel and tear my breast tissue out if I can't get help and then stitch it back up with fishing twine. My name is Andy, that's not actually his name, but we'll go with it. By the way, I'm 26 and I've been on potent birth control pills and have serious regret. I can't look at myself without an extra large T-shirt. Even with that, it's still hard. I feel like a human mannequin. It's warped what I'm going through. The reason behind it is that since young, I always wanted a girlfriend and got rejected and rejected and rejected. So I decided to turn myself into my own girlfriend. And now that I'm not gay or ugly, I could get a girlfriend, but they are put off by my past transgenderism. SRS, that's sex reassignment surgery, remember, should be illegal. It's torture, I imagine, and lab-made hormones only destroyed my body. I hate what I've done to myself and can't find a gram of support anywhere and need someone to talk to. I'm being called a transphobe, totally shunned by the LGBT community. I'm straight anyway, so I don't care, like whatever. Now I'm gonna skip a bit here, it's just too explicit. He talks about his physiology. It's dreadful, but I, I just can't read it. Um, he, he continues, I want my body back. All I needed was to be skinny, which I got weight dysmorphia mixed up with gender. I'm skinny now and that makes me happy at least. I need to know there is light at the end of the tunnel and I'm not stuck like this forever. Doctors are evil and the whole world is going along with this nonsense. I don't deserve this, nobody does. What can I do to get my body back? This was a big mistake. How will I find a wife? I'm completely sterile and no fertility whatsoever. No counselors to talk to. I'm an inch away from ending my life and need to reach out. I was 21 when I started HRT and regret nothing more. I cry every night to suicide helpline, but it isn't enough. I want these breasts gone and my genitals to work again. 
I've ruined my life over a stupid decision made by a stupid young adult, me. I had no idea what I was signing up for. I would really appreciate your reply or any kind words on the matter. I feel sorry for anyone going through this mess, which will be millions, by the way. The world is going, by the way, the world is going. Anyways, I appreciate your good work. Keep going with it, as it will help a lot of people. Anyway, take care. That young man is an Australian. He is here, now, living among us. He is one of thousands who have contacted my friend on this matter. He is part of the great tsunami of young people called transgender regretters. I recently received a message myself from a woman who works uh, on a mental health and suicide helpline, and she said that she gets calls like this fairly often. If the Andrews government passes this bill, which is likely, then even her support, that lady on the phone, of a young man like Andy, who I just read out, will be illegal on threat of prison. My friend who sent me this email, who helps these people by the truckload and is a wonderful person, will be threatened with 10 years in jail, even for advertising his service. If this is not pure evil, then nothing is. Notice that this story was from someone who had only been on hormone therapy. I fear sometimes we think that hormone therapy is a minor evil. It is a very great one. It is an irreversible therapy. And that brings me to my second story of someone who stands to lose more than words can say from this bill. And this was reported this last week by Bernard Lane in The Australian. It's an Australian mother and father who had their 15-year-old child removed from their custody by child protection authorities because they would not consent to her receiving hormone therapy. And you can see why after I read that. Um, the Lane reports that the parents favour instead non-invasive psychotherapy for their child, saying that they believe factors other than gender, including loss of friends, lack of social skills, and a difficult start to puberty may explain the mental and emotional distress. By the way, they are her parents. They are probably best placed than anyone to make that judgement and to know that. But the child was put under a protection order by authorities who judged that the parents were abusive for failing to embrace her self-declared gender identity to the extent of permitting hormone therapy. And a judge, that is an agent of a state, will be asked to approve the hormone therapy soon, uh, whilst both parents remain opposed, and the lawyer, to make this happen, will be supplied by state-funded legal aid. In an affidavit, to child uh, in an affidavit uh, a child protection worker noted that the parents hold Protestant Christian views, um, but the parents say that they didn't know about their daughter's feelings or that she was suicidal because it played out online in pro-transgender Facebook groups. Now, this is really common. Uh, I've learned about this from other parents who had similar difficulties where they say their kids have these activists come into the school, do great presentations to them and do a whole lot of great PR about how good it is to be trans, and then they go away and what do the kids do? They follow them on Facebook, they join the Facebook groups and they start talking in the groups apart from their parents and they get pulled away. And that I've heard this story a few times and I'm just hearing it again here in the Australian newspaper in relation to this case and that's what the parents say happened in this case. And she went to the emergency department and a day after after arrival, there was a sign on her room declaring a new male name in her local ch children's hospital. When the mother asked to talk to the teenager, she said that the nurse forgot to mute the phone and asked her daughter, will they use your correct pronouns? My daughter said, no, I don't think so. And then the nurse said, oh, then you don't want to speak to them. What should I tell them? Doesn't that make your blood boil? Who does she think she is? Unreal. Now, the gender, uh, the gender clinic at this children's hospital in question has seen more than a 700% increase in patients in five years. And a nurse at the hospital told the father that she could not think of a single case in which a child was rejected for treatment. This is ideology. And it's, as I said, causing the tsunami of people like Andy, whose story I read just a moment ago. And I say again, Daniel Andrews is seeking to pass laws that will make these parents not just psychological abusers, but jailable criminals. And meanwhile, the gender-affirming medical establishment and their colleagues, and by the way, it's not all doctors, there's a huge undercurrent of dissent on this, but they're afraid to speak because the medical board will come after them. Um, meanwhile, they're protected, the medical establishment who push this stuff. Do you know, I believe that the transgender issue is one of the very greatest humanitarian crises of our day. 
children's lives are being totally and completely destroyed en masse over something for which there is no scientific evidence and which remains the subject of much debate. And the law is starting to criminalise dissent. It is tr starting to criminalise dissent to such a degree that many of us are facing the prospect of jail. And yet it's interesting to me to observe silence on this issue. A few have spoken, a few, and I'm very grateful for that, and I think that's great, and full credit to those, but many have shut their mouths. There are organisations in this country who claim that they stand for freedoms and exist to protect freedoms. And this is the moment that they were established to prevent, and yet they are too terrified so far to say a word. There are Christian leaders as well, and many Christian leaders have done a great job, and I'm not against Christian leaders, don't get me wrong, but many who haven't said a word, too concerned about being liked, too asleep to say things, and, you know, I'm very grateful to the small number that have, but I think it's timely that we remember something. Silence speaks volumes. A friend of mine told me on the phone this week, silence speaks volumes, and he referred me to this very important scripture in 1 Kings 18, 21. It says this, Elijah went up to the people and said, how much longer will it take you to make up your minds? If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. But the people didn't say a word. Silence in that case spoke volumes. And I am afraid that the silence today speaks volumes. Choose who you will serve, the God of LGBT, or submitting to their fear and submitting to their reign of you know, what they do, which is suppress and to silence and all the rest of it. Are you gonna to submit to that or are you gonna do something greater and do the right thing? This is a crucial, crucial moment. I say again, silence speaks volumes. If you're an ACL supporter, please don't be silent. Please make those phone calls to the offices of your local MPs and be heard. Tell your friends about this and make sure that they are not ignorant. And please pray. These are strange and worrying times. And to the Andes of this world, whose story that I read, and maybe one or two might find this video and listen. You know, there's a tremendous uh, couple of scriptures in Isaiah chapter 56. And I just want to read them. This is what the Lord says. Guard justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will certainly separate me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. A eunuch was a person who was castrated and there's great parallels, obviously, with uh, the transgender uh, situation and certainly Andy's situation. Let him not say, behold, I'm a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, to the eunuchs who choose what pleases me and hold firmly to my covenant, to them I will give in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name which will never be eliminated. And what that saying is this, God has always been intensely interested in the Andes of this world. Those who have been wronged, those who have been marginalized, those who have frankly been abused, and he's always had a place for them in his kingdom. And he's always had open arms for people like that. And all of us in our own small way are prodigals, so to speak, who've turned and gone and lost our way. Some people have had terrible wrong done to them in the process and here is one example, and my heart goes out to Andy, and I want to say, you know, he will give you an inheritance that is better than sons and daughters, and the world may not welcome uh, these kinds of people and may not have a place for them or may not seek to help them, but God does, and God has said there is something eternal and everlasting in his kingdom for such people. That was the truth about the transgender issue and some compelling examples of what it is that's at stake if this law in Victoria passes. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, then make sure to hit the like button. If you want to never miss another video again, make sure to subscribe, or you can right now watch more videos right here. Cheers.